your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Welcome, everybody. Happy Turkey Day. This is This Month in Startups by StartupRate.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany for November 2019. If you are new to our podcasts, we are wrapping up the startup news of the German speaking area in a monthly recording from Frankfurt and New York. We ha have a look at our website startuprate.io or www.startup.radio and you'll find all the links to our recordings and the articles we are quoting from there. Some of the sources are in English, some are in German, and I would like to welcome very much my co-host Chris, live from New York. How are you doing, man? Good. Can't complain. Getting ready for Thanksgiving. Right. You're getting this uh, tofu turkey, right? <laughs> it's tofu turkey. Yes. <laughs> and Brussels sprouts and the sweet potato and blah 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 blah. I'm uh, very lucky to be invited by uh, with an American friend and he has a very loud and fun family and everyone prepares little skits and things and has to say what he or she is thankful for so it's uh, really fun. They are kind enough to invite me and it feels like home then. I admit traveling the world has made me adapt a few habits from abroad and that includes Thanksgiving, but we don't celebrate it on Thursday. Uh, my family does it on Friday and then we combine it um, the weekend after that. Both mothers are staying overnight and we are making German Christmas cookies, Plätzchen. Mm. <laughs> Plätzchen. Very good. Very good. Let's get down to the news here. Enabler, this recording was made possible by Invest in Hessen. Learn more about our enabler here, dub, 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 invest minus in minus hessen.com. Housekeeping, time to brag. We set up our sub podcasts for special interest and our fintech Germany made it up to number 72 in the iTunes business charts of Qatar. Thank you very much. Let's start out with the ecosystem. European tech startups break records with 34 billion US dollars, that is, in venture capital funding this year, writes Stifted. I quote from the article, there's been a massive 40% jump in venture capital funding for European startups this year, even as funding for US and Asian startups stagnates. That's just one of the seven key takeaways from Atomico's State of the European Tech Report. The sharp jump highlighted in Atomico's latest report of the State of the European Tech adds to the growing sentiment that the European tech ecosystem is finally coming of age. It does feel like we are in a golden age for Europe now, says Zonali de Riker, partner at Venture Capital Fund Excel. The quality of talent, the level of ambition and availability of capital are at a completely different scale. Meanwhile, venture capital into Asian startups has halved in 2019 to 63 billion US dollars and US venture fund investment has fallen 1% 1 to 117 billion US dollars compared to 2018. Chris, you want to take over from here? Yeah, sure. I mean, well, I guess there the interesting takeaway is even though Europe gained so much, it's still only one roughly one third of the um, American numbers and half of the Asian numbers, but yeah, the gap uh, seems to be closing. Um, at EU startups, there was a new article about the five best countries in Europe for founders and startups. Um, Germany made it to number two. Um, and just to give you one quote out of that, if you're thinking about which country in Europe is the best for creating your startup, you're not alone. Internationally minded founders take time searching for the best options they might have in different countries across Europe. It makes sense since from country to country, there are many differences in terms of corporate law, business environment, corporate tax and incentives. And you want to take a guess what's number one? I mean, you know it because you prepared it. It's the UK, I would say. 
it's the UK. I mean, who knows for how much longer. But also, if you look at the other uh, three ones, it's kind of surprising. So Finland is number five, Sweden is number four, and number three. Um, I guess someone who knows about startups is not surprised, but someone from the street might be because it is Estonia. They're very digital, very smart, um, small country there. Um, but actually, I do believe UK will be number one for quite some time because if Brexit has some effect, it will not just step in like a hammer. It will st slowly show its effects. Um, let's get to the next news. Let me grab here my show notes. Okay. This news recording goes live on Thanksgiving, so let's talk about an American tradition that made it into Germany as well. 60%... Oh, what is... <laughs> We are not talking food. Exactly, exactly. The, uh, Chris is referring to Black Friday. 60% of German retailers don't want Black Friday. The turkey itself did not make it to Germany or mass yet, but a similar day is celebrated on the first Sunday in October and the Dankfest, but with far less importance to the German public than Thanksgiving in the US. It's not even a public holiday. And that was, of course, not a quote from the article, but it's rather a little bit more around Thanksgiving. You can see the survey where the 60% of German retailers don't want Black Friday here. Um, Christian, can you talk about new funds? Hang on. We had another uh, statistic going on um, from Deal Room Venture Capital, and uh, they came up with numbers uh, saying that Investors in Europe raised in Europe 10.7 billion euros in 110 new funds um, year to date. That is, the top fundraisers included Inc. EQT Ventures, um, 660 million euros, and Balderton Capital, um, 400 million US dollars. Um, but if you're interested more in their methodology, you can learn more about Deal Room and its founder on our website because we have an interview with him. Totally fine. What the people don't see, I have to manually jump between you and me and every time I'm here in the main screen, uh, nobody can see or, or hear anything about you and don't even see the funny things you're doing right now. German car sharing companies are especially in Berlin in a price competition. Some car sharing offers are actually cheaper than an e-scooter. Price ranges, prices range from nine cent to nineteen cent per minute, which is from Kundasina, where Christian also writes from time to time. Do you see future for that in the car sharing, or you think at one point the prices would rise again? I mean, it is it is just wild in general. I mean, Berlin is also quite special in terms of being uh, one of those metropolitan cities which actually still has quite some room for cars and um, the streets are pretty big compared to places like Rome, Paris or London, I would say. But still, I guess in that in the long run, the um, there have to be alternatives to uh, individual mobility. And so we will see how those mobility offerings will go. Um, I mean, the car companies initially started it anyway, just to get some information out of their fleet in terms of how do the cars react after um, having gained a lot of mileage in the first place. So um, I guess for them, it's just still a bit money to toy around and to learn about mobility of the future. Um, but I'm going to take over from here. What Berlin's top VCs want to invest in right now is the headline of an article on TechCrunch saying the range of interest hints at the hints at the expense of Berlin's startup ex ecosystem right now, with VCs focused on everything from fintech agriculture tech and b2b marketplaces to audio travel and transportation so also they're interesting to get an international perspective on what is changing in europe 
talking international in Europe again. We have another article from the FT. Paris overtakes Berlin for tech startups after boost from Macron. The first important change, according to the French tech industry, was the creation of a special tech visa, making it easier for, for the sector to import talent. The latest figures show that in the first half of 2019, French startups raised a record 2.79 billion, that is euros, up 43% on the previous year and the size of their fundraisers is increasing. France is behind the UK, which raised 5.3 billion euros plus 75%, but ahead of Germany, which raised 2.47 billion euros, which is plus 4%. And if you would just stick with me, guys, we are going to the Hubs talking home turf Frankfurt Rhein Main. We have quickly unmasked some fake news about SafeDroid, the startup which had one of Germany's most successful ICOs, then turned public opinion against it with a PR stunt and now is really trying hard to get back trust. There was a claim that some uh, reclaimed company uh, got access to the private accounts of a founder, which was complete bullshit. We understand many people don't like the company, but keep in mind there are also people working like you. But Hamburg-based startup Thing it, a digitization platform for smart offices, intelligent city quarters, and smart facility vet ma um, management just raised a Series A financing of 4.2 million euros. The new co-lead investor are PropTech One Ventures, the first dedicated European VC fund focused on the untapped innovation potential of the real estate industry and the Cologne-based venture capital fund Comparion. In addition, Thing It existing shareholders have invested again, writes EU Startup, and if you don't know anything about Bad Homburg, which is actually Bad Homburg for the Höhe, uh, here's something from Wikipedia. Presently, Bad Homburg is again one of the wealthiest towns in Germany with the Hochtaunuskreis, which is a county, and Landkreis Starnberg, which is also county, county Starnberg, regularly competing for the title of the wealthiest district in Germany. As of 2004, the town's marketing slogan is Champagne Luft und Tradition, Champagne Air and Tradition. And more about Frankfurt, less champagne, but more about uh, hard data. Frankfurt based lending fintech Credit Shelf raises a diversified credit fund which enables qualified investors to invest in private debt of German SMEs. The European Investment Fund is the anchor investor with 30 million euros. The majority of the investment will be conducted via their lending platform and you can learn about more about them in our interview. Last point, companies listed in Frankfurt, TeamViewer is a newly listed tech startup from Germany, which you can say in the broadest sense from around Frankfurt, if you forgive me, uh, confirms outlook growth in Q3 and is a candidate for either SDAX or MDAX in December revision of the indices. DAX is like the really big one, 30, um, 30 titles uh, lead index in Germany. And of course, there's a medium and a small sized index as well. And that's what we are talking about. Handing over to Christian for Munich. I'm really not sure about this bad Hamburg. Bad Hamburg in that case. Uh, Champagne in the air and tradition, like, I don't know. Anyway, moving on from Bad Homburg to another very wealthy part of Germany, Munich. Um, I guess there the region of Starnberg is the one who's com which is competing with Bad Homburg. Um, we talk frequently about uh, Scout24 and that they have been, which is like a comparison website for all kinds of uh, products. Um, they and affiliate website, you could say, I guess. They have been thinking about a leveraged buyout and formerly they are headquartered in Munich. Scout24, the German group of online platforms, is considering to sell or spin off its success car platform, Autoscout24. Then we see in Munich uh, that intro tech company Otto Nova raised an additional 60 million euros in venture capital for private health insurance in Germany. Um, but 
currently has less than 500 um, clients. And um, so that's kind of an interesting story. You can read more about it on Deutsche Startups. And we also had an interview in 2017, shortly after the launch. And you can find that in the show notes as well. And then we have the Munich-based identity verification platform ID Now, which also raised some funding, 36 million euros to be exact, 40 million dollars from the New York-based private equity fund Corsair, Air, Corsair Capital. Chris, Christian, I, I would say you now totally need to do companies because it's your all-time favorite uh, rocket internet. The rocket internet corner. Probably I need a sound or something. So the rocket internet corner. Um, yeah. Once again, for people still not familiar with it, rocket internet probably like the biggest conglomerate of startup uh, concepts in Germany. Um, a bit infamous for copycatting a lot of internationally or a lot of concepts that internationally worked and uh, sometimes with some trouble sometimes with good news for example today rockets cash reserves are melting right writes gründer szene um, and gives a brief overview of the results as of the third quarter of 2019. Since 2018, Rocket Internet started 20 new companies. It invests heavily outside of Germany and has 2.6 billion euros left. Also, Rocket Internet shuts down its startup for invisible mouth guards um, called Frank Smile. And the real estate crowd investing platform Brickvest has to file for insolvency. Um, it was a British German startup backed by banks, business angels, and Rocket Internet. And last one, Home to Go, a search engine for vacation homes valued at 400 million euros. Last year bought Casa Mundo. Now the layoffs there at Casa Mundo in Hamburg started. Okay, going back here to um, the Scooter Wars. Um, we keep track of this and uh, it's basically there is a lot of small um, electronic scooters and they're like, it feels like hundreds of companies who are investing lots and lots of money to get the market lead there, monopolize it and then actually um, get to cash in. Coop, the European electric scooter sharing service is shutting down. It's a sad day for fans of Coop, the Bosch-owned electric scooter sharing service operating across a number of European cities because they are shutting down. And also Cirque, the Berlin-based e-scooter company, makes layoffs following, they call it Operational Learnings Rights Tech Crunch. And the established players are not dead yet, All right, Chris? And um, then we have the e-commerce. Um, oh, Jesus. Sorry, uh, IKEA Germany, the German part of the Swedish furniture manu uh, retailer, generated 33% more online revenue, uh, meaning 500 million euros, which I guess is still a relatively modest amount of money compared to what they make in stores, and pulls ahead, but still pulls ahead of Home24, which is another big player in Germany, and only that only made 352 million euros. Um, which means let's move on to venture capital. Probably you want to do this and then I will do the media part. I thought so because you are uh, one of the media people here. Yes, a media person. Venture capital, only selection. There are way too many venture funding rounds to keep track of them. And we just lift some of them here. Berlin-based Frontier Car Group raises 400 million US dollars from OLX Group. The investment is a combination of debt and equity. Last year, the company raised 147 million US dollars already. German tech unicorn Celonis raises over 261 million euros to extend its market leadership in process excellent software. Comtravo, a business travel booking startup, has raised 23.4 million US dollars, which is 21 million euros in a Series B round of venture investment. New investors included Deutsche Bahn, AER Tickets, past investors, Project A, Creadum, and 
BTOV also participated. Household service startup Helpling raises 22.3 million US dollars for Asia Pacific and European expansion. Back to the media guy. Yeah, um, probably the biggest news in German media is that the uh, investor KKR got the green light from the European Union to buy a 40% stake in Axel Springer, which is probably the biggest German media house and uh, runs brands like Bild Zeitung, a German tabloid, Welt, Gründerszene, but also made a lot of investments in digital endeavors within the last couple of years. Also Gründerszene, uh, which is a blog we very often quote here, again, which I write for. And um, so this deal is pretty big. And then there's the German media house Pro7 Sat1, which is uh, one of the two big German private television uh, conglomerates initially. And they are going to start a competitor for Spotify. Um, we are a bit critical, though, because they also started a um, version of, let's say, Netflix or Amazon Video called ne Max Dome, which is a video on demand service. And but one that only has like a market share of around 2%, 5%, depending on which criteria you look at, compared to the more like 45, 50% of Amazon and 35, 40% of Netflix details there are in on the German media um, website, Kress Report. And finally, the last news before you, Turkey, Travel Tech, Berlin-based Travel Tech unicorn, Omeo, acquires Australian travel planning engine Rome to Rio. And then there's stay ahead of the curve. And only thing left for me to say is remember sharing is caring. It was a pleasure having you here. And I don't want to uh, hold you back from your Tufi Turkey, Turkey, Tufo, Tralala. Tofurky. <laughs> ah. Was good. Was good having you. My pleasure, Chris. Looking forward to uh, seeing you again. And the next publication will be around Christmas with the startup news. Then, then we take a very short break and we'll be back end of January. Bye bye. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring.